when I got into news, I got into it kind of accidentally. I was looking for something after I got out of the Army. I started writing. I was had a gift for writing. People would tell me stories and I could put them out in a way that, that, that read well. So that, that was cool. Um, it didn't really click with me until I had been at the Advocate and I started making stronger connections to the people. And one of the people that taught me that was an old girlfriend who ran into me on the street one day and said, you know, hey, you write a lot of words for the aggravate, but some of that crap's really boring. <laughs> and after that, every time I sat down at a typewriter, and we had typewriters when I started, I could see that lady's face and I didn't want it to be boring. So as we graduated to computers and did things like that, I tried to make it a little more exciting. Not change it, make it live for people. The guy that does that really well is Nord Bly, and I'm sorry Nord's not here. Nord has an entirely different take on things, and he, used to, he and I used to go at each other's throats. We met finally last year. This is true. We've been battling each other in print, by phone, by whatever, for a long time. He was writing in the 70s when I was in college. He wrote about some of my relatives. Gus Klinke is my grandfather's brother. We go way back. We got heritage. But I finally sat down and had coffee with Norb. It took us two hours, and we still haven't finished. If we'd be here, we'd dominate things, and we'd still be talking after everybody went home. What's important to us is writing the words, getting things correct, getting the meanings, getting the nuances. And one of the things that, that impresses me about the advocate going back is that's always been a theme there. Talk about Lawrence University. Lawrence University was near and dear to the Harrises. Chan was not my first boss, but Chan's family started the paper in 1862. There's room for competition. There were four papers at one time on the peninsula. You had to have a Democrat, a Republican, an Independent, and a in your eyes. Okay, now it's a little bit, things have changed a little bit, now you've got some more technology. But I think that, that what I've seen at the Advocate is that as the Advocate grew and changed and tried to reflect its community the best way it could, my mentor, the gentleman that we all speak of with great respect when we talk about news in Door County is Jan Harris. Chan learned a lot from his family, but the, this community went bent over backwards to protect Chan Harris and Chan's newspaper because Chan's parents were murdered. And the community gathered around that boy in 1951 and protected him and made sure that he and his business kept going. And Chan remembered that, and Chan paid that back. And that's something that his successors in the news media have not done a very good job of at all, is to keep track of the community and pay back. You could have all of the Peninsula players you want, you'd find Chan Harris in an audience. And you name any event, something at the auditorium, something with, you picked. If it had to do with Door County, Chan was there. He'd watch baseball. He started that, that inter-school track team to give all the schools the, the, the message of the importance of sports. He wasn't that great of an athlete himself, but he knew the importance of all those components. I brag about Chan because Chan's heart is in the advocate. Chan's heart is in the vault on the first floor where you can read every page of the advocate from 1862 to today. And that used to be one of the most enjoyable parts of my job was to do traveling back and to pick those segments from each year as we go through and what was important to those people at that time. None of that is done anymore. We've been corporatized. We've been downsized, we've been finagled, we've been flim-flammed, we've been Gannettized. Gannett owns 100 daily newspapers, almost 1,000 weekly newspapers. By the time they cut my job in December of last year, they had reduced their worldwide staff from about 40 or 50,000 to about 20,000. Last week they cut another 2,000. In the last two years, their stock dropped from 60 bucks a share to three. And in the meantime, look what they did to your media. They cut the heart out, they cut the people out. What they're using the Advocate for, the Green Bay Press Gazette, the Manitowoc Herald Times, and Kiwani and Algoma and all the rest, is to make money to pay back the debt that they spent to buy all those newspapers and to pay their shareholders. Last year, they returned 40% on a dollar. Unconscionable. 
criminal. And you still buy the raid? I'm sorry, I'm not here to, to, to slam Gannett because it's happening across the country. I thought it was only me that noticed, but there's a gentleman that works in the courthouse in Sturgeon Bay, and I won't embarrass him by naming him, but he talked last week. And he said, it's terrible what's going on with that paper. And I said, yeah, it's getting real thin and there's not much in it. No, he said, it's terrible that there's no journalism there. And it's terrible what Gannett is doing, not only here, and not only Gannett, but the others. Lee Enterprises, the Tribune, you name it. Pick your poison. They're not watching local government. He works for government, and he's telling me nobody's watching. Not that there's enough to steal in Door County. There's enough to steal. Or not that if you buy a politician, he'd stay bought. But nobody is there to keep tabs and to keep the fight going. For a while, it was guys like, like Steve Kastner and Norb Bly or Poison Pen guys <laughs> would write, make things, keep things active. When somebody's watching, you keep the debate going. When somebody's watching, you can't slide things through. You can't build a bridge nobody wants. You can't pull weeds that we need to filter our water. You can't kill off the dragonflies just because they're a little tiny guy. You can't poison the water just because it's cheap. Somebody's got to watch. Without media, without the pulse. Pulse is growing. I'm proud of these guys. I'm proud of Gannett, really, because what they've done is create opportunity. Last year, when we were bemoaning the loss of thousands of jobs, Wrightstown and Kekana had their papers closed down by Gannett. And guess what? Today, there are newspapers in those communities. You watch. Last week, last month, Gannett made the decision to run all the editorial content for Kiwani out of its Algoma office. You watch. That's a pattern. They'll close Algoma. They'll close the Advocate. And down the road someday, you'll pick up your Press Gazette. And on Monday, it'll be the Algoma page. And on Tuesday, you'll see the Kiwani page. And on Wednesday, you'll see the Marinette page. And it still won't be any content and there still won't be anybody watching. And what's really sad to guys like me and Nora Bly is there won't be any art. These guys are doing art, but art in the use of words that clearly, honestly, describes what's going on is art that to me is ABC. Accurate, brief, clear. One last comment. I'm running along here and I apologize. Nope. 30 seconds. <laughs> wow. Go. <laughs> <laughs> I never got to be the editor of The Advocate. I never really wanted to. Um, I was never offered the job either. <laughs> For a lot of reasons. You never put your loose cannon at the front of the troops. Uh, regardless of what's in my heart, regardless of what's in my head, I felt that my job as a frontline news guy was to be that abrasive that I would help polarize the dialogue encourage the comments from one side or the other. If that meant that I had to insult you to make you speak or ignore you to get you to come talking, that's the technique that was used. Uh, some, most of you are old enough to remember black and white TV. Um, there was an old program called Rawhide, Rowdy Yates. Rowdy Yates was the number two guy. Rowdy Yates was Clint Eastwood. He was my hero. The neat thing that I bought from him was that number two big shit happened. And when you go to work for a guy, you got a guy like, like Dave that's making decisions about money and advertising, transportation. You got other people making other decisions about who to hire, who to fire, where, where, where this comes from, that comes from, how to pay these bills. But somebody's got to get the thing done once the order is given. I made myself Rowdy Yates, and it's not a comfortable position, and it's not a popular position. But by God, I trained a lot of journalists who are out there and can handle this business really well.